<laughs> um, hello and welcome to our webinar. I hope now you can uh, see us all and also hear us. Otherwise, please use the chat function and let us know if there are any technical problems so um, we can fix them as soon as possible. And before we start with this webinar, a short um, Swedish lesson. Uh, welcome to Örebro University means in Swedish, Welcome to Örebro Universität. And yeah, the presenters for today, it's uh, first of all, it's me, I'm Katrin Bieder, and I will moderate this webinar today. I'm um, actually an intern here at the Communication and Collaboration Department. And I started my internship at the beginning of February and planned um, to stay until end of June. But I do really have to say that I um, like the city and I also really like the university. So I'm really happy everything worked out so I could prolong my internship and stay until end of December. So which this means actually if you plan to come this autumn, that there might be still a chance that we're going to meet. And yes. Um, one of my um, projects I work with is, for example, uh, to organize these webinars. And um, we have some Swedish words also in the presentation. And I have to say uh, from the beginning, I'm not Swedish. Uh, I'm from Germany, but I will try um, to pronounce everything as good as I can. And we have also four other presenters uh, with me today. And yeah, maybe you can just shortly uh, tell um, the students who you are. Yeah. Uh, my name is Frida Garville, uh, and I am uh, the international student assistant. Uh, I work at the international office at Örebro University, and I work with welcoming uh, international students. <clears throat> yeah, so my name is Adrian Karlqvist. Uh, I'm the vice president of uh, the ESN uh, section here in Örebro, and I'm here to represent the section. Yeah, my name is Pascal. I'm a student in the master's program of chemistry. And I started last fall, so this is my first year. And I'm Ingrid Eriksson Jogsten. I'm a researcher here in uh, environmental and analytical chemistry, and I'm uh, representing the faculty as one of the program uh, coordinators today. All right. Um, before we start, uh, some information. Um, during the presentation, you're always free to use the chat function if you have any questions um, about what we talk about or if there's anything um, you still would like to know. But there will also be um, some time at the end if you um, have more questions or if there's anything we haven't covered. And this webinar uh, will be recorded and the link uh, to the webinar as well as the link to the presentation will be distributed to you afterwards. And today we're going to talk about, uh, first of all, accommodation. And we will also give you some more information about practical matters as well as Swedish language course. And we do also have some fun parts in our presentation, which will come afterwards with the introduction program. And when Adrian will tell you more about uh, what the Erasmus Student Network has to offer um, during your time as a student. And we will also talk more about Urban University how it is um, here uh, to be a student here, and about Urbru um, as your new hometown. And um, at the end, we will round up this webinar and let you um, know a bit more about what happens next. We will actually not talk about any program-specific um, information. So if you do have any questions uh, related to your specific program, you find on the next two slides, um, all um, contact information of each of the program coordinator. And if you have a specific questions, um, you can always um, contact them via email. And these contact information will be in the presentation as well that we will um, send to you afterwards. And um, if you do actually plan to enroll here at Urban University, we can already tell you that um, we're really looking forward uh, to see you this autumn and we will do really everything we can to give you the best support and uh, to have a really great start here in Urbru and here also especially at the university. And if for some reason uh, you plan actually not to enroll uh, to Urbru un uh, University, uh, we would really kindly like to ask you uh, to decline your offer 
at universityadmissions.se um, so your spot can be offered uh, to another student. Okay, so let's start um, our webinar with accommodation. And um, on the picture here, you see actually uh, some student accommodation, how it really looks like. And this accommodation is located close to campus. And it's a bit sad now that you can't look um, and have a look over the rooftops, because if you could do so, you could see already um, the university, because it's really uh, at less than a five minute walk, um, I would say. And um, now we're going to talk about uh, accommodation, um, which the housing office offers for the students that do not have a Swedish personal identity number. So if you're going to watch this um, webinar now or the recording and you are actually Swedish or you do have a Swedish personal identity number, then this information do not apply um, to use. But you can still uh, check out our homepage and you will find more information how to find housing if you do have actually a Swedish personal identity number. But I guess uh, most of you do not have one. So for you, um, it's like that the housing office can you support to find housing. And if you want the support, you have to complete uh, our application form, which is on our homepage and which is also linked here in the presentation. And you still um, have to send it in today because today um, is the application deadline. But don't worry, like if you haven't done it yet, you can still do it um, after our webinar. And on these pictures here, you also see um, how accommodation can actually look from the inside. And what you see here is a corridor style living, uh, which means you would have a private like bedroom and a private bathroom, but you would actually share a living room and a kitchen with um, other students. And yeah, this is just uh, one example how it can look. There are really different um, versions of how it can be. And I know, Pascal, you live um, in a bit different uh, yeah, style of living. So maybe you can uh, tell us a bit more how your living situation looks like. Yes, yeah, I was also uh, got my accommodation via the housing office. But it's not a corridor style, so it is uh, sort of a container village, I guess you could call it. So you have your, your own room, your own small kitchen, and also your own uh, bathroom. So yeah, for me, yeah, that suited me best. Uh, yeah, and so it's you're always, uh, I think the housing office tries to accommodate you with your interests. Yes. So we do have um, different options for you, and we'll try um, to find the best uh, that fits for you. But what all uh, accommodations do actually have in common are that they're really close, uh, located to campus, so in walking distance. And the rental contract for student housing would start on the 27th of August. And um, if you wish to arrive earlier, that's possible, but you do have to contact the housing office to set them um, different regulations. And you can also always contact them uh, if you have further um, questions and can write to the email address, which is also um, shown here in the presentation. And even if you plan to come with a family, the student housing can um, help you to find accommodation. You can uh, come with one partner and two children. So a maximum of four people um, can actually also find housing over the housing office. And now we go on with some practical matters. And it's do, it is really important uh, to mention here at the beginning that we will talk about these matters in a really um, general way. So we cannot talk about every specific country um, you all come from. So please, after the webinar, check also out um, your country-specific regulations if they have maybe some specific agreements with Sweden or also um, if your health, and health insurance has some uh, special regulations we, we are not informed about. Um, to start with is the Swedish personal identity number, which is also called uh, Personnummer in Swedish. And uh, this number is only available for students that stay actually longer than 12 months, which means this number is um, available for all of you that are admitted to a two years master program here at the university. And to get this number, you can register at the local tax office, which is called uh, Skatteverket. 
And this number is connected to many practical matters. For example, opening a bank account, also getting um, medical treatment, which we will also talk about in the next slide. And it's really important to know that you can just apply for this number in person, which actually means you have to apply um, for this number after you have arrived here in Sweden. And if you do have um, further questions about that, you can also visit their web page. And as mentioned before, and now we will shortly talk about health insurance. And here it's important to know um, that it depends on your duration of studies and also where you come from, which um, health insurance applies for you. So first of all, we will talk about all these students that got admitted for one year master's program. And if you got admitted for one of these programs, it depends on if you come from outside the European Union or the European Economic Area, or actually if you're a student uh, from inside the European Union or European Economic Area. So if you actually uh, come from outside, you need to bring uh, your own private health insurance. But if you are a student that come actually from European Union and you study a one-year master program, then you can bring your European health insurance card. And if there are some reason uh, why you cannot obtain uh, this European health insurance card, you have to bring also, like students from outside the European Union, your own health insurance. And now, um, if we uh, talk about all these of you that actually got uh, admitted to two years master program, then we can say, um, as we've said on the slide before, you are the students uh, that are able to apply for a Swedish personal identity number. And uh, once you applied for this number, you will be covered by the Swedish healthcare system and you will pay Swedish patient fees. But yeah, as we said also at the beginning, uh, please do also inform yourself actually before you arrive in Sweden again about the insurance coverage that applies to you. And um, now we will also shortly take a look at tuition fees and residence permit. And this is just important for all of these students that come actually from outside the European Union and European economic area. So all of you um, should have already received an invoice uh, with the first installment of tuition fee. And you have to make sure to pay these fees in time to secure your spot here at the university. And these tuition fees um, have also to be paid before you can actually apply for a residence permit. And after you have paid um, these fees, the university will automatically send out information to the Swedish Migration Agency and afterwards you will be able to apply um, for residence permit. And this residence permit is required for all of you um, that stay longer than uh, three months, which means actually for all students, even um, if you're admitted for one year's master program or if you're admitted for a two years master program. And you will need to um, receive this residence permit before you arrive in Sweden. So you have to apply for it already now. And you can also find more information about that on the web page of the Swedish uh, um, Migration Agency, which is called uh, Mika Hunsverket. And um, one tip that we can uh, give to you is that you can actually not get a residence permit, which is valid longer than your passport. So please, before apply, check the validity of your passport and um, if it's uh, not valid long enough, extend it before you apply for a residence permit. And this is something, again, which is um, important for all of you. Um, it doesn't matter where you come from, because uh, you actually have to come here to Erebro once you start your studies. And um, if you plan your journey, you have different options. One of the options would actually be, um, I hope you can yeah, see where I'm pointing at, uh, will actually be to fly to Stockholm Alanda Airport, which is located here close to Stockholm. And it's actually um, the closest uh, international airport that takes uh, long distance flights. And from Stockholm, you could take a train um, about two hours here to Örebro, here's the university, or a bus, which will um, take you around three hours. But there are other options as well. You could think of flying to Gothenburg, which is down here, and take either a train or a bus up here to Erbru. Um, but you can already see it. The distance is a bit longer, so it will also take you longer. 
uh, to come from Gothenburg to Erbrew. And the most convenient way um, that you could uh, actually choose to come here is to fly to Erbrew itself, because Erbrew has its own uh, small airport uh, located 20 minutes outside of the city center. And this airport is um, really small and does not take international flights. But what this airport do, uh, uh, does have is actually a main connection to uh, Copenhagen. So you could think of flying to Copenhagen and then change uh, on a flight to Erbrew. And um, it does not always have to be flying. You uh, can also think of coming by um, a long distance bus or also by train because Erbrew is really good connected throughout um, whole Europe. And these options might be interesting for you if you maybe plan on to bring a bit more of luggage. But all um, options and also all different bus companies and train companies you can find um, also on our homepage. So, and at the end um, of our practical matters, we will also talk about um, work during your studies. It is actually possible um, that you can search for a part-time job. You do not uh, need an additional work permit if you're an enrolled student here at the university. But you should have in mind that it might be a bit difficult to actually find a part-time job. And also, your studies should always have your first priority. And all our uh, master programs are actually designed as full-time studies, which means that even though you might not have um, full-time studies and classes and uh, a full-time week of lectures, you still have a lot of group works and other projects to do. So you do uh, should have this in mind um, before actually searching for a part-time job. And yeah, now we go on with some information about our Swedish language course. But before I do so, I really have to say that um, if you come to Sweden, it's of course nice if you know some Swedish basic words, but really you don't have to know anything in Swedish. Because um, when I came here, really like every Swede I've ever met can speak English. This is no problem at all. Um, so you can find a way, your way around also with just um, speaking English. But yeah, as I said, I do get um, that it's much more um, nice to speak actually some Swedish words. And therefore, the Swedish Institute um, offers an online basic course in Swedish um, language and also with some insights of Swedish culture. And this uh, class is actually for free. And you can uh, find this course um, on their web page. And it's open um, already now. So if you're really motivated to already start, it's no problem. You can just go um, to their web page. And there are also other offers if you um, like more um, a traditional way of um, studying and actually um, you want to obtain real classes, then you can apply for a course at Folk Universitetet. Um, and these courses are open for everyone and they do offer actually um, different levels. But what I do have to say, they're not free of charge. They cost around uh, 1,700 Swedish crowns for 10 or 12 um, classes. And you can find more information about the different classes and how to um, register on our web page. And if you do think of um, taking this offer, it might be also smart to check um, this web page out before you actually come to register in time because the classes um, have just a limited number of spots. And there's one last option. Um, it's offered. Um, it's called Svenska für Invantare. It's a shortcut SFI. And this is actually offered uh, for all of the students that do have a Swedish personal identity number, which means this offer will be available for you if you study a two years master program here at the university. And it's free of charge. And you can find uh, more information about these Swedish classes also on their web page. But you should have in mind that um, this offer might maybe not be available from the beginning of your studies if you first have to apply for a Swedish personal identity number and afterwards uh, you have to wait until um, the next classes start. All right, and so now as mentioned at, at the beginning, we come now to a bit more fun part about the introduction program. And uh, Frida is here today who organized the program and she will, yeah, let you know a bit more about what awaits you when you come uh, to study here at Erbrew. Yes, 
Uh, and I'm going to start by saying that after my little presentation, uh, I have to go due to another appointment. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write them in the chat while I talk, and then I will try to answer them. Uh, I'm also available at email afterwards if you come up with any questions then. Uh, but the introduction program. Uh, it, it aims to welcome you here to Sweden and Örebro and Örebro University uh, and to really just create a space for you uh, so that you feel at home, so that you can succeed in your studies and your time here uh, in Sweden. Uh, it, it is designed to integrate you uh, on three different levels. Uh, it's a three-week program. Uh, the levels are an academic level, a practical level, and a social level. So when it comes to the academic level, uh, we will uh, give you lectures on academic writing and exams and take-home exams and essays in Sweden um, so that you can be successful in your studies. Um, it might be different from where you are from. Uh, we will also give you tours of the library so that you know how to uh, find your way around and just use the resources that we have. Um, also, the practical uh, integration is uh, we will take you to IKEA so that you can get stuff for your new room or apartment. Uh, we will show you around campus so that you know the best places to get coffee or printing or whatever. Uh, we will also show you around the city uh, and visit the city hall to meet local politicians that will teach you more about your new uh, town, your new hometown. Um, and the social uh, level, of course, is just to integrate you with both other international students and Swedish students uh, by organizing activities such as a volleyball tournament or different competitions. Uh, we will go to the nature reserve on the Buddha. We will uh, drink beer together. We will play mini golf. Uh, and yes, uh, so at the end of the, these three weeks, uh, usually you feel quite at home. You know your way around and you've made a couple of friends. And the program, uh, you can find it online on our webpage. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, and also, I should mention that um, we try to design the schedule uh, so that it, it doesn't <clears throat> clash with any of your uh, classes the first week. So uh, you shouldn't be worried about missing anything uh, in your studies. But uh, it's free of charge, uh, and nothing is mandatory. Uh, so show up when you feel like it and when you want to, and hopefully you'll have a great time. All right. Yes. Then I'm just gonna. So if there are no more uh, questions for Frida, yep. And I see no one typing. Oh, I see someone typing. <gasps> so maybe we I'll just wait around. um this minute. But um yeah. Until we have the question, I will uh, just tell you what we go on now with. And this will actually be also a really fun part. It's about travel and adventures, because of course you come here um, to Sweden um, to study, but there's also a really like, um, as I said, fun part for you. And ESN helps you um, and offers you a lot of like activities in the semester. And um, yeah, after we have received the question and Frida could answer it, Adrian will also go on and tell you more about uh, Erasmus Student Network in Urbru. So the question is, uh, if the program starts 3rd of September and REN starts on 27th of August, what's the right time to arrive? Uh, it really depends on your personal preference. If you feel like uh, it's not convenient to stay for a couple of days by yourself, uh, then I would recommend to arrive maybe, I mean, the semester starts on September 3rd, uh, so you should be here by then. Uh, but if you feel like you want a day or two before the introduction program or uh, the start of the semester, then I would recommend to come maybe one or two days ahead. But uh, as long as you're here when the semester starts, it's fine. Um, but also you can join the, the, the program at any time. So even if you, if you arrive later. But I don't know. Do you have anything to say about that? No. I think it's really a personal preference. Uh, I mean, there will be people at the university before uh, September 3rd, but uh, there won't be an organized program. Uh, so as long as you're here on the 3rd, we'll happy. All right. So, OK, oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> OK, so if there are now no more questions, Frida, then yeah. yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here. Thank you. Perfect. And yeah, now, as I said before, um, Adrian will go on with um, Erasmus Student Network. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we are the Erasmus Student Network. Uh, we are mostly working with uh, non-master student, but we do have uh, a lot of travels and trips, and we love to have uh, master students with us on the trips. Because uh, when you arrive in Erbro, uh, you're probably going to notice that you're going to learn a lot of learn, get to know a lot of people that are studying different things, and you're going to get a lot of friends that are not necessarily in a master program. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of Swedish people in the ESN that are curious about exchange students and wants to get to know you. Uh, so even though our like main thing isn't really the master students, we always kind of embrace you guys when you arrive and make sure you feel welcome and uh, take you with us on parties and uh, activities. Uh, and uh, from what I've heard, because uh, from the one who's in charge of our or introduction program, uh, which is a separate one, it's not. It's more for the Erasmus students. Uh, there might be some opportunities to uh, attend, uh, like the ESN uh, orientation as well, uh, which costs uh, nine hundred crowns. But it, that includes a lot of social activities. Uh, I can't guarantee how many spots it is now, though. Um, so that's something you'll have to see when you arrive. Um, but uh, we have like outside of the orientation program because we we have a we have a father system, a body system that will uh, go through the whole semester, and uh, we so we have kind of an introduction program even after introduction program where we do activities during the full semester, and that is something that is uh, usually open for everyone. Uh, and you will get a lot of great opportunities to uh, meet other students. All right. Uh, we also have uh, a few trips. Uh, we have uh, a trip to Lapland, which is a very, very Swedish thing to go on. Uh, you you get to experience what is what I would say is like the essence of Sweden. Uh, you'll have snow. Maybe some northern lights if you're lucky. Get to see reindeers. Go skiing. Going in a those, one of those snow cat things, uh, and that is one that is really popular. Uh, you get to visit the ice hotel in uh, Jukasjärvi. Um, that one is really cool. Uh, then also we have the sea battle, which is a, co a fine kind of collaboration with. Uh, other sections, so we work together with Finland and I think it's uh, Latvia and a few other uh, countries around the Baltic Sea. We organize uh, a cruise, which is a thousand students on a boat uh, going between uh, Riga and Stockholm, uh, just having a great party, a lot of activities and stuff like that. Uh, and then also we have one of our newest trips, that is the trip to Gotland. Uh, we've only tried it once so far, uh, but we got great uh, response on it. Uh, it's uh, it's also very Swedish. It's one of the more uh, cool places in Sweden, I'd say. It's a little bit more Mediterranean in, in some ways because it's pretty pretty unique. Um, yeah. Uh, we also have a visa-free trip to St. Petersburg, uh, which goes through Helsinki and Tallinn. Um, it's something our students just came back from now, uh, and they seem to have a great time. They were going by a limo uh, to some nightclubs and seeing a lot of historical sites uh, and cool stuff. And also we have the trip to Norway, which is one of the best trips that I've been to. Uh, you get to see so much beautiful scenery uh, and you get to visit like one of Norway's oldest uh, churches uh, get to visit Bergen which is a really cool old city uh, old trade city up in Norway and you get to walk on a glacier and see all the fjords and stuff like that yeah. okay I see someone typing here but we will just go on and take um, your question as soon as it appears and yeah, our next part will be about Urban University. And now I see what's about arriving a week or um, more before 27th. 
extra payment for the apartment. Yes, um, you can contact the housing office and um, most cases is possible to arrive earlier, but the um, base will be added um, afterwards to your rent. So um, then you pay just for the extra day. So not just uh, you will not pay then for a whole extra month, like the whole August, but just the days um, that you have arrived earlier. But you do have to contact the housing office and inform them before because they will be responsible um, for your apartment and for your keys and so on. Um, all right. So as I said, um, we go on with Erber University and um, it's a bit bit more yeah again about the study part and uh, how it will be and yeah Ingrid can tell you a bit more about it yes yeah, so first of all I would like to congratulate you to um, being admitted to one of our international master programs um, you have already received some um, information via email um, on your program and in the beginning of, of August, you will receive more information on how to register that you do the first day uh, of the semester and also about the um, introduction uh, program that Frida was uh, telling you about. You will receive information of the schedule and the program and course uh, syllabus. Uh, one thing that we have here is that usually the program outline is such that uh, courses are taken one at a time um, to give you time to focus on one subject uh, at a time instead of having larger exam periods uh, towards the end of the semesters. And the program usually starts with the introduction both to the program and the, the first uh, course from course coordinator and program coordinator. And the courses um, are built up of different um, teaching activities, uh, lectures, seminars and group works. Some programs have laboratory work as well. We, In our program we try to use um, case studies and uh, problem-based uh, learning approaches to to use more other skills than just um, pure subject knowledge skills um, like communication uh, problem solving be able to discuss uh, and learn in a collaborative way and uh, classes uh, are usually not bigger than 20 students uh, usually a bit smaller and with the with these smaller classes uh, it's usually room for a high um, degree of interaction with teachers and researchers so that um, you come close to the research environment we have here at the university okay and then finally i would just like to uh, congratulate those that have received um, scholarship to study here at Örebro University. We have four scholarships uh, given out from the university and then seven from the Swedish Institute. Okay, and before we go on, I see we have two more questions um, about apartment. So the first one is from Emmer, which says, uh, sorry, I was late to the webinar. What is the contact information for the housing department? And um, actually, I don't know um, if you also have probably then missed the part uh, where we said that we will actually record um, this webinar and we will send you the recording, including also the presentation afterwards. And you can find um, the contact information on the slide and um, the email address like calls. I, I don't know if I can pronounce it in a good way. It's inresande at oro.se. But you can find um, this also um, on our web page. And for you, it's maybe also important to know that um, today is actually uh, the application deadline. If you want uh, the housing office um, to help you and support you in find housing. So if you have not applied for housing yet, please just go after the webinar to um, our web page. There is the section uh, when you switch the web page to English and master students, you also find an information about housing and you find there, first of all, the information and uh, contact information for the housing office. 
as well as the form that you need to fill out to apply for housing. So actually the housing office can guarantee you a place to stay when you come. And we also have another question. Uh, thanks. Also, I didn't get the part about the different kinds of apartments. Could you please repeat that? Yeah, so like um, the pictures that we have, show, uh, have shown you um, before in the presentation was actually just one way um, of living. It uh, means it was a corridor style living, which actually means um, there are more people living on one corridor together. But all of these people have their own bedroom and their own bathroom. But all these people together share a kitchen and um, a living room. And um, this other option that Pascal talked about, because he is not living in such a corridor style living, is actually um, that you could also get a place um, where you have your own um, bathroom and own bedroom and own kitchen. So where you do not have to um, share something. And um, I don't really know how it works, but I guess Pascal can tell us is that the housing office ask for your preferences or how does it yeah, work? Yeah, exactly. That was after I applied, after I think the deadline has passed, the uh, housing office uh, sent an email to me and uh, the other master students, I assume, and asked uh, what, what kind of style I would prefer. So I uh, replied. And then, yeah, uh, uh, I guess then the housing office sorts out what apartments are available and what are the interests and then you get to sign the apartment uh, you prefer if, if it's available of course okay i really yes. hope uh this answered um your question uh so we have different options and the housing office will actually try um to find the best possibility for you but yeah you can uh keep on asking questions if um you have uh some more and yeah, now we go also a bit back uh, to Pascal again, because I guess it's also really interesting for you to um, hear a bit more how it is actually um, to study here as a student. And he can tell us a bit more about that. So maybe, yeah, you can tell us a bit more about who you are and uh, what actually uh, made you to come to Urbu. Yeah, so uh, I'm originally from Germany and uh, I, I met a bachelor's in, in the Netherlands. So, uh, of course, it was also an international program. Uh, so yeah, I really like the international environment. So when I look for a master's, I had that in mind. And uh, of course, the best way to land an international program is uh, to go somewhere foreign. <laughs> so yeah, and then I looked to uh, different universities and cities in mostly in Scandinavia, because I knew that for me, I don't have to pay tuition fees. So that's all, of course also a big factor. But that of course also only applies for EU students. And then yeah, on uh, uh, it took me a few uh, a while to to sort through different programs and look what interests me, and I found that the one at Urbo University suited me the best. And then yeah, I applied, and uh, I was lucky enough to get the spot, and now I'm here. So yes, great. And um, we have heard from Ingrid before that Sweden is a bit uh, special in the way how they study. So how was it uh, for you this new experience? Yes, for me, I think it's uh, a very good way uh, to organize a program. Because yeah, as Ingrid mentioned, you only have uh, one course at a time, which means you can really focus on that. And then you have a mix of, of lectures and then a group works and yeah, problem-based learning. So you solve a sort of a problem together as a group that is based on a previous lecture, for instance. And I think that's a really good way to learn since, uh, yeah, for me, when, when I listen only to lectures, it's not much that gets caught. So. I prefer to work uh, on problems uh, yeah, by myself and with the group. And also the advantages, of course, and you already have a group and you know how to work together. So it's also easier later that you learn together for the exams, for instance, and that you help each other. Because for for master's program, for instance, that uh, all students in our program, we had different bachelors. We come from different backgrounds. So it's really good to, to yeah, complement uh, each other. Okay, so um, if you do have more questions uh, for Pascal, you can ask um, at the end. He will stay with us um, the whole webinar. So yeah, if you just come up with something, um, please just let us know and he can help you from a, a student point of view. And yeah, he will also um, go on now and tell us a bit about Urbru, um, as this will be your new home. And we have heard from Adrian that there will be great places where you can uh, travel to. But also, yeah, the city itself is a really nice city and has a lot um, to offer. 
Uh, yes, indeed. So you can you can see the the pretty castle there. So the entire city center is pretty much organized around the castle. And although it was a, quite a small city, the city, so it's uh, relatively quiet. But uh, yeah, everything you you uh, can find in the city is available here. So you have lots of nice bars. Uh, you have a cinema, of course, and and uh, also uh, since when when you come to Sweden, of course, you also have to enjoy a bit the, the outdoors. And yeah, in around Uruguay there are a lot of uh, nature reservoirs and forests and and that sort of thing. So whatever your interests are, uh, you can be quite sure that you can uh, find something that that suits you here in Uruguay. Uh, yes, yeah. For for the budgeting, it's of course always a very important part for students. Yeah, the the budget you can see here is is quite accurate. That's about yeah. I have to live from about eight hundred euros per month. Uh, and yeah, for me, it's it's quite easy uh, to do, but of course, it always depends on on your lifestyle. If you go out very often, then of course you have to uh, uh, take a bit more into account. But yeah, the good thing is that the student housing is uh, quite cheap compared to to other student cities, so that usually is the biggest part of your budget. So yeah, for me, I can uh, for me it's quite easy to live on this budget. Okay. So to round up this webinar and to come to an end, we will also tell you now uh, what happens next. And this will be just a short uh, repetition as we have um, mentioned all these dates already um, in our webinar. So today, the 15th of May, it's an important date uh, if you have not applied for housing yet. So please, if you have not applied yet, download um, our file that is either um, attached uh, to the presentation later on or go uh, to our homepage. You can find a PDF file there and fill it out and send it in today to the housing office. And at the beginning of August, like Ingrid said, you will get more information about registration and schedule and also um, the course syllabus. Then on the 27th of August, um, the rental period will start for the housing for all of you that have actually applied for housing um, options through the housing office. And on the 3rd um, September, our semester starts. And also um, the introduction program that Frida has organized, it will be from the 3rd of September till 20th of um, September. If I can add something on that, uh, the introduction program is organized so that it does not interfere with uh, any lectures or uh, planned activities uh, in your courses. So that has been well uh, coordinated. Yes. And we have some, ah, many things. Okay, we already get um, a lot of things. But yeah, before we finally have time uh, for questions, I want you all to do something. And um, in the webinar in the morning, it had worked really good. Frida already told me she got really from all um, participants of the webinar a request to the Facebook group. So I want you to take your phones now. And if you do have a Facebook account, you should open your uh, Facebook app and there you can type in master students at Erber University. And um, yeah, when you find the group, uh, we want you to join to um, keep being updated uh, before you come. And uh, Frida is the administrator um, of this um, group. And yeah, if you have further questions to that, you can also um, contact her. All right, and now it's finally time. If there's anything that we haven't covered or we were not really clear about or there's something um, you would still like to know or to ask Pascal, then please um, just let us know now. We will uh, wait a few seconds. Yeah. Um, does the, yeah, does the introduction, introduction oh, to... come, uh, also start on September the 3rd? So, yeah. I have to check that uh, date up. Oh. I have to check. <laughs> so the introduction program that is organized just for the master students does start on the 3rd of September. And um, if you want to know more about that, you can actually um, go also to our homepage. You will find the program, including days and times there. Yeah. And yeah, there will be another program that is organized by ESN that I don't know actually when it starts. <laughs> no, but, I'm, I'm checking. Um, you know, but you can also what you could do is uh, check the our web page. I think it's yeah, it's also linked yeah. in the presentation. Uh, so check our web page because we're gonna update it and put up the activities. 
I can't remember when it starts because I'm not the one organizing it. We have a different committee for it. Okay. So are there any more questions from your side? Otherwise, if you come up with something later on, or if you maybe um, watch this recording and you come up with a question that we um, have not answered, please do not hesitate uh, to contact us via mail on um, magnatsföring at oro.se or to contact if it's something about um, a specific question about your um, program, please contact um, your program coordinator or if it's um, more information about housing or if you want to send in your form, contact the housing office. But um, all contact information and links you will also um, find in our presentation. And yeah, as I see uh, no one typing, then we would um, thank you for your participation. We um, were really happy and hope we could uh, help you out uh, with some, uh, some things. And we hope uh, that we will see you in Urbru um, when the semester starts, or how um, Swedish people would say it. Uh,